Lionel trading cards. Okay. All right, so I was recently window shopping on eBay and I came across something that was interesting. It caught my eye and I thought it might make for a good video. And I had never seen these things before. I'm sure somebody out there has. It's not like they're a secret. I just hadn't seen them before. So I picked them up. They weren't that expensive. And what the guy was selling was a set of these. Lionel Greatest Trains Collector Cards, Duo Cards, seven cards per pack. And there were 18 packs that the guy was selling. Kind of neat. And on the back, it says licensed by Lionel LLC. So Lionel didn't make them themselves. They just licensed them out. Looks like they were made by Duo Cards. And the copyright was 1998. And up top, this is kind of neat. Store your complete collection in a beautifully printed Lionel Greatest Trains Deluxe Three Ring Binder. To order, send name, address, no P.O. boxes, and just $15.95 to some address in Saddlebrook, New Jersey. Now, I'm willing to bet that if you sent something there today, nothing would happen because I checked and it looks like Duo Cards is out of business. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what it looked like. So it's kind of neat. And like I said, there were 18 packs in the collection that he was selling. And at first I thought maybe I would open one of these up and show you the cards, but then I, I kind of felt bad about it because they're in such great shape and at this point, they're around 20 years old. And so I figured, you know, why mess these up? So what I did after that was I went back on eBay and I found someone who was selling what looks like the entire collection out of the packets. And so here it is right here. So on the top, we've got a car that has a checklist and it's got a list of every card in the collection. It looks like there were 71 cards in the collection. And then number 72 was the checklist itself. And there are some neat trains on this list. So for example, number 20, the state set and line on line sets best of 1929. Or number 42, this is a classic, the number 773 Hudson. So it's kind of neat. So let's take a look at some of these cards. So I'm just going to pick a few from this stack that I think are interesting. So here's number 71, the Lionel Visitor Center. And I'm guessing this is the old Visitor Center that was in Michigan. So it says, Lionel invites you on a magical tour of our history and tradition. The tour begins with the historical story of Lionel and concludes with a trip to our 580 square foot layout that is designed for hands-on excitement. Reservations are required. Call... And then there's a number to reserve your spot on our next tour. <laughs> and again, I bet if you call that number now, you won't be able to make a reservation on the tour. And on the back, they've got a picture of a train. Here's number 69, the Phantom Locomotive. Lionel delivered even more surprises in 1998, including the release of the fabulous Phantom Locomotive, Created by Mike Fulmer, accomplished industrial designer of Lucasfilm fame, the Phantom is a fascinating design study into the seemingly dissimilar concepts of what-if and steam locomotive design. A huge hit with Lionel enthusiasts, the Phantom promises to be the first in a long line of modern-day Lionel classics. <laughs> and of course, there's a picture of the Phantom. Here's one for the Atomic Energy Commission tank cars from 1997. And of course, who can forget the number 464 sawmill from 1956? Oh, and of course, the GG1 congressional set from 1956. That's legendary. Boy, this is like a greatest hits of Lionel from 1900 to 1998. This is fantastic. Lionel's greatest achievement, the pre-war number 700E, finally re-emerged in 1950 as the number 773 Hudson. Lionel engineers removed the myriad hand-applied detail parts and retooled the cab to feature more relief detail, but the reduction in visual impact was more than offset by the stellar performance and value. At $50 in post-war dollars, the 773 wasn't exactly a steal, but it was a tremendous locomotive value nonetheless. Best of all, Lionel's catalog artwork showed the mighty Hudson in all its heroic glory. And there's a picture of the 773. Got the 2333 Santa Fe F3 diesel from 1948, another legend. 
Oh, and here's a big one. The Rail Chief set, the 700E Hudson and steel articulated streamlined cars from 1937. The 700E, for those of you who don't know, was basically the Vision Line locomotive of its day. And that's why it was appropriate that when the Vision Line came out, the 700E was one of the first ones they did. Rail Chief never was a Lionel product so indicative of the torch passing taking place in Lionel's engineering and manufacturing departments. The 1937 offering featured the absolute latest in Lionel technology, the O-Gage number 700E Scale Hudson, derived from the groundbreaking M10,000 of more than three years before. Still, the formula worked. Rail Chief sets sold relatively well, given their pricey status in the line of 9750 holding their own until the arrival of the phenolic-based Madison cars in 1941. There it is. Here's one of my all-time favorites, the Lionel Standard Gauge 400E. In its final years, the mighty Lionel number 400E stood tall and proud. Lionel modified and enhanced the 30-inch behemoth, including adding an onboard whistle in 1935. With a retail price of $45, however, Lionel would phase out Standard Gauge in the next few years, leaving gleaming nickel-plated and enameled examples of pressed steel artistry like the 400E to train collectors for ultimate preservation and enjoyment. And there's a picture of the legendary 400E. And I've actually got two 400Es in my collection. They're both reproductions made by MTH. But yeah, the 400E is awesome. And this is cool. This is the old number 7 brass and nickel steam engine from 1920. And I've actually got a reproduction of this one as well. Very cool. And of course, there's a picture of it. And here's the last one I'll show you. And this one is one of the cards that shows off a catalog. So this one highlights the 1915 catalog. In a style that would come to define the company's marketing efforts for decades, Lionel in 1915 depicted its model trains in realistic settings for the first time. Though expressed through stylized illustration, the environment-based images nonetheless had a clear message. Lionel trains were as realistic as the world around us. Lionel repeated the cover and much of the remaining catalog in 1916, though it published a revised price sheet that year. And there's the 1915 catalog. So yeah, I hope you guys found this interesting. I sure did. You know, it looks like on the card, everything goes in rough chronological order from 1902 until 1998. So I thought this was really cool. I'm really glad I picked these up. And since I got this set that was already out of the packaging, it means that I can keep these ones in their packaging and I won't have to mess them up. So that's win-win. Anyway, that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time.